Hi, I'm Ksenia and welcome to Guiding Star Astrology. I'm your Astro Weather Girl here with this week's Astro Weather Report. I'm going to show you how the stars are going to affect your life this week. In my videos, I use both Vedic and traditional Western techniques with tropical astrology, not sidereal astrology. I also use the traditional system of whole sign astrology for my analysis. You can use this video to the best of your advantage by listening to the introduction to understand what the week holds for you and then going to the timestamps for your sun, moon and rising sign to get a more personalized forecast for the week ahead. Astrology is not designed to scare you. It's designed to give you information so that you know what the good and the challenging energies in the week ahead will be and you can therefore consciously work with them to the best of your advantage. Remember, knowledge is power. Now there are scammers about and so if you should receive a message from me on any platform requesting your money for a reading, know that it is a scam. Report them immediately. And now settle in and let's see what the astral skies have in store for the week ahead. Hello my beautiful friends and welcome to this week's Astro Weather Report where we're looking at the energies in the astral skies from the 8th of July through to the 15th of July. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive straight in and look at what's happening on the astro wheel this week. First up on the 10th of July we have a trine from Mercury to Neptune at 27 degrees. So here is Neptune at 27 degrees of Pisces, trining Mercury at 27 degrees of Cancer, two water signs. So how good does it feel when you're in that zone? You know, when the creative juices are flowing and you're moving through life in a really dreamy, happy fashion, there's music on every street corner and the messages from spirit are just coming through loud and clear. That's what this energy is. Don't you just love those sorts of days? So July 10th is a day fashioned in heaven just for you if you love that sort of energy. Creative projects flourish under this influence. Spiritual endeavors blossom like the apple trees in spring and your inspiration can sprout new ideas in the soil of a happy mind. So enjoy, dance and be blessed my friends. It's a lovely lovely annual energy actually twice annual energy to enjoy um, i should also point out before we move on to the next energy that's in play this week that these energies i talk about are influential on a general level you might have something personally going on in your chart that could mitigate what i've just talked about for example you might be going through a heavy pluto or a saturn transit and then this energy you barely feel at all and that goes for all the energies that i talk about every week in my astro weather reports and I just wanted to make that clear for everybody so that you understand if you're not feeling what I'm talking about there's probably an astrological reason that's personal to you for why you're not experiencing it that way okay moving along on July the 10th so this energy is July the 10th and then also we have a move of Mars into Virgo on July the 10th as well and this is going to be what we're talking about for the all signs breakdown very soon what a yin yang experience Mars in Virgo gives us as energy receptors here on the planet that we are now in the positive Mars transits in Virgo cause us to become super duper productive we just get busy with the practicalities of life with helping healing and fixing whatever's not working for us in some way we've got the enthusiasm for it we've got the energy to sort things out find strategies to deal with our problems it's also a really good energy to get your goals in order and of course Mars is going to be here for quite some time in fact he's going to be here until the 28th of August so for all this time get your goals in order and start to work on fixing whatever is not working for you in your life you've got the the enthusiasm and the motivation now until the 28th of August to deal with those things but as I said in the beginning of this piece there is a shadow side as well we've talked about how this can be for our greater good what about the shadow expression of Mars in Virgo well there can be a tendency to take on too many projects and too many tasks feeling overwhelmed anyone <laughs> well this is a time when our frustrations 
um, come out because we're overburdened by trying to juggle too many balls in the air at once. And it's also a time when our frustrations can express as complaining and whining and being overcritical of ourselves and of the people around us in our lives. So be aware of that. Forewarned is forearmed. And know how when when you you know feel like you're whining or someone says, hey, you're whinging a lot lately, um, you'll know why. Mars in Virgo. We're going to talk about this for all signs shortly. You might also find Mars in Virgo during this period from the 10th of July to the 28th of August that you are sensitive now with an oversupply of nervous energy. So find some great projects to direct your energy into under this influence for the next couple of months and you'll avoid feeling fidgety and nervous and more worried than usual with Mars here in the shadow side of Virgo. Get stuck into some meaty creativity. Mars is a creative planet. Virgo is actually a creative sign as well. Go to and enjoy. Then on the 11th of July, we're going to have an opposition of Mercury to Pluto because Mercury is going to get up to the final degree of Cancer opposite Pluto at the final degree of Capricorn. What a kicker this one is. 29 degrees is a very karmic degree for a start and you've got karmic planet Pluto making this aspect to a personal planet Mercury. So big sigh, ah, you might need to brace yourself for this one because competition might amp up if you work in fields of advertising and marketing or if you're putting your work out there to promote, you know, to advertise, to market your work, your business in any way. You might feel like everyone around you is advertising the same thing. I notice this all the time. I'm sure it's the astrological influences, but whenever I do a promotion for something, uh, one of my products, one of my services, one of my readings and so on, whenever I do a promotion, I see all my fellow astrologers doing the same thing, promoting a relationship reading or, you know, uh, some sort of a solar return or something like that. Um, it, it happens every time. But under this energy, the competition amps up. It might feel intense. It might feel overwhelming. And your administration tasks could be absolutely doing your head in as well. Mercury is to do administrative things like lists and organization and Pluto opposing that can intensify the, um, the amount of work that you have to do in that regard and also how you're feeling about that work which is you know it becomes a bit too much. Now if you work in a mercurial field like trading, buying, selling, insurance, general business, accountancy, administration, journalism, writing, public speaking, facilitating or general sort of primary level teaching then don't be surprised to see in your work environment manipulation, power struggles or underhanded tactics in your workplace while Mercury and Pluto are opposing one another. And this is only going to last for roughly a day or two and then um, Mercury will begin to move beyond the orb of Pluto. So it will ease off, luckily. So do you work in Plutonian fields? Plutonian fields are things like psychology, grief counselling, funeral homes, waste management, shamanic or past life practitioners, spies, criminologists, the renovation industries or archaeology. There's just a few. There's many more, but that's just a few that Pluto rules. Then you could get ready to encounter trouble with Mercury things under this influence. Maybe trouble with contracts, trouble with communications, technical services, general communication misunderstandings that happen a bit like mercury retrograde but more applicable to a plutonian field of occupation under this influence so for one for armed my friends if you know what's coming and it crops up in your life you'll understand why and hopefully have some strategies to negate those experiences also on the 11th of july mercury will enter into leo so it's going to make an opposition aspect on the 11th to Pluto at the final degree of Cancer and then he's going to move into Leo. As I said, he's going to whiz past that degree and it will ease off after a couple of days, um, uh, the Pluto-Mercury opposition, so don't worry too much about it. But Mercury enters into Leo on the 11th of July, so words take on some significant authority during Mercury's transit of Leo. 
Leo is the sign of the king of leadership and in that level a certain amount of authority and Mercury is words so our words become authoritative while Mercury's here we're paying more attention now we feel the impact of people in our lives through the words they speak words have power now so what you say is going to affect others what they say is going to affect you be conscious however because the words that we say during this transit no matter how well intentioned can come over as arrogant if we don't consider them and evaluate our words first so if you're in an important situation maybe a business meeting or some sort of negotiation mediation situation um, do weigh your words with caution um, so that you're not coming across as up yourself as we say in Australia um, now the more likely scenario because um, Mercury's okay in the sign of Leo the more likely scenario is that we have the ability to win people over with our verbal warmth Leo is warmth and and the creative flair we put into our words so it can be quite winning in that sense our creativity reaches a peak while mercury moves through leo ideas seem to just flow creative ideas mercury is ideas leo is creativity fire energy and it just seems to flow our intellect this is the sign of creative intelligence our intellect is shining so what is not to love about this transit just be careful of though you know weighing your words up when needed um, but otherwise enjoy the beautiful flow of this energy mercury and leo this week and now we're going to move straight to our all signs breakdown for Mars moving into Virgo. So of course we're going to start with Virgo as our first house. So this could be Virgo rising, Virgo sun or Virgo moon people. You can look at all three signs, pays to do so. So the first house, Virgo, is where, what's our house of survival, our, our you know it's really representative of our main reason for incarnation which will be Virgo um, related things uh, and if you have Virgo rising and so having Mars move here will influence you very personally it will influ influence your main reason for incarnation you may know what that is and Mars here is going to motivate you get you busy with achieving your main reason for incarnation maybe it's to serve or to be a healer or to bring some sort of uh, knowledge around you know balancing life and perfecting the, the the experience of life like you know perhaps Virgo is, is about you know um, bringing uh, fixing problem situations so maybe you're in debt how do you fix that problem maybe your health is not so good how do you fix that problem and so there's going to be a lot of energy given to those sorts of themes um, your main reason for incarnation might be showing people how to get out of debt or showing people how to get healthy and fit and live more uh, vital lives and Mars here is going to give you what you need to do more of your purpose for incarnation so very exciting in that way very empowered Mars here doing those sorts of things Mars is very like the first house it's an initiatory energy so this is a time when you might be starting up some something creative something entrepreneurial you might get a lot of creative ideas let's say you already have a business you might be getting a lot of creative ideas for how you can enhance your business cause it to flourish more or take it in a new direction and initiate new things with maybe like I said a business but also with um, other Virgo related things like the practicalities of life you know how can you make your work uh, your, your relational balance this is the relationship access more so, you know work better how can you initiate something new in your relationship in a practical way it might be you know writing up an agenda that says you you know these are the tasks we're going to um, do around the house with your partner or a business partner someone you collaborate with this is the tasks we're going to do in the business or the tasks we're going to do in the house and let's divvy them up so that it's fair and equitable let's get productive let's get um, strategic about how we deal with the practicalities of life in this partnership this is the partnership axis as I said you have the energy now to uh, also help heal and fix what's not working usually in your physical body so you might be um, you know doing I don't know sleep getting more sleep if you haven't had enough sleep and that's going to fix the fact that you're tired all the time you might be um, going to the gym more to try and get fit ready for that bikini body if you're in Australia and you know itching to get out of winter and move into summer um, you might be doing that fixing your health fixing the tone of your muscles this is the first house of our physicality and how our physicality expresses so Mars is actually um, connected to muscles 
in astrology and so you might be fixing something muscular while it's moving through the sign of Virgo the first house uh, so there's physical effects of Mars here it's really a time also Virgo for getting your goals in order sorting out Mars is strategic he's the strategist of the horoscope and he's about like planning I'm going to do XYZ and then taking action to achieve it so, so it's not just you know being lost in your head and thinking about what you should do it's about right I'm gonna this is my goal this is what I want to achieve and this is the necessary steps to get there boom I'm gonna do it so getting your goals in order now there can be a shadow side to Mars moving through the first house too. You might feel a bit overwhelmed with, you know, maybe you have been lethargic for six months while winter's been on um, and you're feeling overwhelmed with what it's going to take to get back in shape again. So too, too much of a, um, an energy or feeling too overwhelmed by the, the, um, the goals that you've got or the, the practicalities of achieving what you want to achieve with your body might feel somehow overwhelming. There might be, um, you know, you might be feeling, like I said in the introduction to this, uh, like overcritical, looking at your body in the mirror and just, you know, coming down hard on yourself. And if that, that does nobody any favours and really ruins your self-esteem. But Mars in Virgo can bring sort of the complaining, whining and overcritical nature to the first house, the house of the body. So if you find yourself doing that, saying, oh my goodness, you know, nothing ever fits me anymore or um, that kind of stuff. Um, listen to your self-talk and pull pull yourself back detach a little and 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 be uh, observant of how of your self-talk especially in relation to your appearance or your body and remind yourself this is Mars in the first house Virgo being overcritical I'm not going to buy into this I'm going to choose to think different thoughts about who I am and my physical self um, so keep aware of that and then when we have the knowledge we have the power to overcome the difficulty you might be very feeling very nervous nervous energy goes hand in hand with Virgo and when Mars moves through here every two years we sort of sensitize that area of our, our lives um, we get very nervous energy can be amplified in the physical body and of course that can cause some anxiety or some sleepless nights and that kind of thing so as I said in the intro find some great projects to direct your energy into um, and in your case Virgo I would suggest physical projects like you know maybe start a new jogging routine or or a walking routine if that's what you prefer um, get some movement Mars is is energy get some movement happening in your body dancing or yoga or stretching or something like that that really helps um, to get the, the antsy energy out of the body so that you don't feel so nervous or uh, frustrated and that sort of thing um, now Virgo I also wanted to mention that I will I am going to be doing readings I haven't done readings for about a year now because I've been working on the Royal Stars Academy I'm returning to doing readings but only for my Patreon family who have discount codes to use um, after having had a one year off so I just want to let everybody know that if you've been wanting a reading with me you need to be a Patreon member to uh, have access to my readings page and it's a very special private readings page that only my patrons are getting um, and that way you can get a reading with me if you would like one all right thank you to Virgo moving along now we're moving to whoops the board is moving without me um, to Libra Libra rising Libra Sun and Libra moon people uh, let's have a look at what this is bringing you Mars moving through your 12th house of Libra uh, and so sorry of Virgo so this 12th house is there's positive and negative here it's very sort of yin yang Mars in Virgo um, so what's going to be happening is you might be feeling very energized and very productive with 12th house things you might feel the impetus to go and have a massage or uh, go to a retreat of some sort maybe a spiritual retreat or it could be just sort of any kind of like stepping out of your usual routine you know maybe uh, go to a, a workplace conference or a seminar that's not something you would ordinarily do uh, and so you maybe you go to another country or another state or another city or something and you're energized to participate in those things to get involved in those things and um, Virgo is a very practical energy so it's no surprise um, that this might be inspired this transit might be inspiring you to go and get involved in something to do with work Virgo but in a retreat like area or an escapist like area 
I would also say for many Virgo people, there might be an energy of helping, healing and fixing what's not working with 12th house things too. So if your prayer life has felt uh, a bit dry lately, you know, or your spiritual practices, whatever they may be, you know, you might play a singing bowl every day and just meditate with the sound of the singing bowl or you might be light incense or you might do yourself a tarot reading or something, whatever is a spiritual practice for you might have got dry and crusty lately or not, not feel like it's uplifting you the way it used to. Mars here can energize that, can help fix those spiritual practices that haven't been comforting you as they usually would, that haven't been serving you as they usually would. So that's a blessing that Mars can bring here to the 12th house. 12th house is also channelings, visions, intuitive feelings, uh, omens and signs. So uh, you might be seeing a lot of um, a lot of that sort of thing. Mars energizes the wherever it goes and so it's energizing 12th house things there's more emphasis now on channelings visions intuitive feelings now mars isn't a psychic planet by any stretch it's a it's a very sort of in many ways a very real practical planet not often in sort of other dimensions but it's going to bring more energy because mars is you know in it energy and enthusiasm to those things so if you're not experiencing more signs and omens in your life you might be seeking them out you might be going and getting an astrology reading or going to see a psychic or doing a past life regression things where you're getting messages from spirit you're going to be uh, desirous of and pursuing now Mars wants to pursue things so uh, that can be part of your experience as well and it's a good time while Mars is here to explore if you're interested in this sort of thing, past lives, karmic influences, and how they might be playing out and affecting you in this lifetime with your beliefs and attitudes and um, maybe hang-ups and fears as well. So it's a great time. Get involved in that sort of thing. Use this energy to bless your life. Now, there are some things that, um, that Mars can bring that are a bit negative here. Um, I mentioned some past life paranoias or um, fears and that sort of thing and Mars might have you feeling overwhelmed with usual like the paranoias that you might have or the fears that you might have so let's say you've got uh, a fear of heights um, you might be invited to a party on the 32nd floor of some skyscraper in the city and you're feeling overwhelmed with having to go there and maybe it's from a past life experience where heights were was an issue for you or maybe having you know you're going to go to the ocean with a group of friends and you don't really like the beach because it, you know maybe you had a bad experience at the beach in a past life or something like that and you're feeling overwhelmed so Mars can trigger fears and paranoias that you don't even know why you've got them but they're there so in that sense use the Mars energy to explore those things you know do some deep psychological deep diving uh, again if you want to get a past life regression to have a look at that um, you, you can um, but you know you might also like to do some reading on the topic of karma karmic loops behaviors and things like that and start to strategize Mars is a strategist planet for how you're going to fix that get some support with how you're going to deal with any sort of hang-ups and phobias that seem to hang around and you you can't pinpoint why they're there uh, sleep and fantasy and escapism are part of the 12th house now Mars being a, an energetic planet can be creating more nervous energy and more mental energy remember Virgo is ruled by Mercury this sign of the mind um, and you might find that sleeping is more difficult that you're more restless at night and tossing and turning while you sleep or having dreams that are violent Mars is violence um, so you you'll be more sensitive in that regard uh, when it comes to sleep so strategies might include having a night light in your bedroom or playing some calming music while you're falling asleep or having um, some sort of a humidifier with scented oils or something things that bring calm things that can sort of ease nervous energy in the bedroom might be uh, a good idea as well to help you cope Libra um, with any upheaval Mars might bring and he's going to be here until the 28th of August so there's a bit of time for you to work on these topics okay so I just want to conclude for you guys my beautiful Libra and friends that I am by letting you know I'm doing readings 
for my Patreon family only. Um, I haven't done readings for about a year because I've been busy with the Royal Stars Academy, but I would like to offer readings to my Patreons after a one year sabbatical. And so if you would like a reading with me, you'll need to be a Patreon and you'll be given a special access code to readings that you can purchase directly with me. Okay, thank you, lovely Librans. Scorpio, Scorpio rising, Scorpio sun, Scorpio moon people. Well, Mars, your ruling planet, first house lord in traditional astrology, is moving into Virgo, your 11th house on the, uh, what did I say, the 11th of, let me just check that, the 11th or the 10th, was it? 10th of um, July and will be there till the 28th of July. And so there's a big focus. It's very, very strong for you, Scorpio, because Mars is your ruling planet. So wherever your ruling planet goes, you, you tend to get more intensity in that area. And here in the 11th house, the house of friendships, networks, profits and gains, um, dreams and goals that you might have, Mars can energize those things. You're going to get very busy with friendships and social connections and pra maybe practical things like to do with friends. Like maybe your best friend, um, the back step's broken and you're going to go around there and help her fix it up one day. Or maybe, um, you know, you're invited to some get together or a group get together but it's for a practical cause maybe you're fundraising for something or that you're going to be busy with practicalities of socializing and networking and friendships um, over the next couple of months until the 28th of august it's a super productive energy because it's energizing especially for you guys it's energizing the 11th house so you might even meet new friends during this time usually masculine friends or friends with um, a lot of assert assertive qualities, the qualities of Mars or might be sort of big and loud kind of personalities that you're encountering in your social networks with Mars moving through um, a social house. One thing that Mars also does in our favor is uh, helps us, gives us the energy to in Virgo heal, help and fix things that aren't working. So uh, if you're part of a, a social group or a network or um, yeah, a, a group of friends where there's been some fractious activity or people aren't getting along, you're going to have what it takes to go and say, hey, let's, let's try and find some resolve here. Let's try and heal this rift. Let's try and fix the relationships and connections with friends and associates that aren't really gelling at the moment. So that can be lovely. Just, you know, don't get in too deep with those sorts of things. Um, uh, but, but yes, it's a time for maybe trying to patch up things with friendships that have been uh, less than stellar, shall we say. Um, this is also the house of our dreams and goals and our ambitions and our wishes for our life, how we can achieve what we want and Mars he gives us the energy to set more goals and to create a strategy not just a vision board that says oh I want to you know manifest this and manifest that it's actually very practical especially in Virgo because you're going to be able to be like well you know in 10 years time I'd like to be in such and such a position in life what do I need to do to get there well I need to perhaps get a certificate uh, in a certain you know course or something like that and then I'll try and get a job in this area and that'll create more income that'll get me to this level and then I might be and have a strategy for your goals your dreams your aspirations realistic of course especially with Virgo here um, you're not sort of lost in fantasy la la land um, with Virgo in the 11th house Scorpio you're very grounded um, and you know you're going to be able to create some strategies with Mars here spend the next couple of weeks while Mars is in Virgo figuring out how you're going to get where it is you want to go. You can look five years ahead, ten years ahead. This is a house of forward thinking and um, the future. So five years, ten years, twenty years, where do you want to be? Where do you want to be when you're an old person in the nursing home and you're looking back on your life and you say, mm, yeah, I'm really satisfied with what I accomplished and what I did. What does that look like to you to be satisfied with what you accomplished? Use that as a question to then strategize, well, how are you going to get to that position in however many years time it's going to be when you're in the nursing home. Um, okay, it's a time Mars here can give you the energy to fix equipment, um, things like uh, an internet, um, something that's not working or a website that's not working properly. Mars here gives you the energy to fix things. Um, I'm just thinking because sometimes Mars rules accidents. So, you know, some of you may have an accident with 
uh, an iPad or a phone or something like that, that can happen as well, like our electrical devices uh, you might have an accident with Mars energy here in the shadow side but in the positive you also have um, like I said the desire now to go fix that old laptop that you haven't used for ages and get it working again because hey that's going to be handy so anything that is electrical anything that is internet based um, that carries a like a website component to it um, then you can actually address and fix now one thing though, there's a, not one thing, the shadow side of Mars here can bring uh, feelings of overwhelm when it comes to group involvements. Like you want to fix things in a group that maybe isn't working or you want to relate to people but there is overwhelm and anxiety, you know, about being perhaps involved in um, you know, big groups or going to where big groups gather or something like that, getting involved in a political party or an organization of some sort, um, might fill you with overwhelm, might fill you with nerves and, uh, you know, nervous energy. So, uh, you know, that's for one for armed around that. Um, one thing I suggest when you're feeling overwhelmed is find a social project that really floats your boat and concentrate on that instead. Don't feel like you've got to put yourself into uncomfortable positions uh, in life where it's just going to create nerves and string you out. Instead, find a social, this is a social house, find a social uh, project or um, get involved in a workshop of some sort uh, that really floats your boat and direct your nervous energy into something that actually feels good to you. Uh, keep in mind this is an Upachaya house and so for the duration of Mars's stay here things can actually improve. Uh, Mars in your chart rules you uh, so you're going to connect with more people but Mars in the chart also rules Aries your sixth house um, of work and so it's possible that you might experience more uh, more, re more rewards and gains from your daily work uh, like you might do a bit of overtime and get some more money you might be asked to come into work a lot more and therefore um, go home with a bigger pay packet um, that's the kind of thing we're looking at rewards and gains uh, with the ruler of the sixth house moving through the 11th and so as this month wears on from the 10th of July to the 28th of August things might get better in terms of what you're receiving for the work that you do every day in the world Scorpio and I just want to announce before I close your little section Scorpio um, that I am returning to doing readings for people after a one-year sabbatical where I have been preparing the Royal Stars Academy I am returning to doing readings but only for my Patreon family so if you would like a reading with me come join the Patreon family and you'll be eligible uh, at bronze, silver or gold star level to, uh, to purchase a reading with me if you want one. Thank you Scorpio. All right, a Sagittarius rising, sun or moon. Well, from July 10 through to August 28th, so, um, Mars is going to be moving through your 10th house. Now, this is where you're going to feel super energized and super productive, the house of Korea. You're going to be coming up with lots of creative ideas and perhaps some new entrepreneurial endeavors to support uh, your career aspirations and your career goals. Super busy with the practicalities around career. So um, this could be, a, you know, it, 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 it could be a career aspiration that you've had or a legacy that you want to leave the world when you're gone. So like you might work every day at the local hospital but your career goal is to create an album or write a novel or something like that and so Mars energizes the career goal not the everyday work routine there's a difference between the two I've explained it many times on my videos sixth house is the work we do to pay the bills tenth house is the legacy we want to leave the world when we're gone so you have lots of energy to put into creating a legacy or whatever that that uh, component of your life, the career component of your life looks like. Super productive. Um, you also have the energy to help heal or fix what is not working with your career. Maybe you've, I don't know, maybe you've been producing music for 10 years now and it's just not getting any traction. Well, under this energy, you're going to be able to strategize and come up with a solution to where the problem is, why it's not getting any traction and what you need to do to fix it. Mars can bring not illumination like that, but the energy to deal with the problems. Mars is great at is a great problem solver, great at dealing with problems. 
So it's time to get your goals career-wise in order now to know what steps you need to take to achieve higher and better and greater in career and to put those aspirations into action now. Maybe you need to start a Patreon page. Maybe you need to open up a website. Maybe you need to um, do a, a book tour or an album launch or something like that. Or if you're in a conventional career and it is the legacy you want to leave, maybe you need to approach your boss about a pay rise or taking on a new project that feels more aligned with who you are. So get your goals in order. Know that you have the backing of Mars to help and heal and fix what's not working in your career and go to create that legacy. Now, there's a shadow and light side to Mars in Virgo. And the shadow side, I've talked about what you can do that's really worthwhile, but the shadow side is feeling overwhelmed by your career situation. You know, maybe you've been trying to put those albums together and get them out to the world for the last 10 years and you're just feeling like, ah, oh, it's too much, you know, I've, I've got uh, this album launch one, you know, one week and then I've got to fly to this other country and promote this other album another week and I'm just busy, busy, busy trying to get somewhere. You feel overwhelmed with something to do with career. Be careful though because this energy of Mars in Virgo can lead to frustrations that cause you to complain and whine and be overcritical. So in the workplace, in a you know career environment, let's say you're working for government or something and you're whinging and complaining and I never, I always get overlooked for promotions and that my boss and you're overcritical of your boss and he's this and he's that or she's this and she's that and that does you no favours with the people that you work with or you know people who are surrounding you in your career. Um, so do a double check if you're acting like a victim and instead act like the superhero that Mars represents and try to make change where w things aren't working for you. You might also have a bit of an oversupply of nervous energy um, when it comes to this realm of life as well. You know, you, you're feeling overwhelmed because there's just so much you want to accomplish and so much you want to do and and the energy is just keeps stacking more things on your plate, so to speak, because that's Mars. <laughs> um, do, 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 go, 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 go. Um, so we're sensitized to an overwhelm, a level of overwhelm in career areas. I would encourage you to find some some projects that really float your boat. So a, a career project that doesn't feel like work, that doesn't feel like a burden. Maybe you love marketing or advertising something that you've produced. And so throw your energy into creating some posters or an advertising campaign and you know enjoy what you're doing um, to help soothe that energy of nervousness or overwhelm by focusing in on one project rather than trying to juggle many uh, in relationship to career. So uh, that's, that's really the focus of Mars in Virgo. Remember my Sagittarian friends, there's many things going on in the chart all at once, but this is an energy that will be playing out at various points over the coming days. Now, I wanna let you Sagittarius friends know that I am returning to doing readings after a one year sabbatical uh, this week and if but but they're only available I should say for my patreon family so if you would like a reading with me uh, you need to be a patreon bronze silver or gold star member to be eligible to get a reading with me because I don't want to overwhelm myself especially with Mars moving into Virgo um, so uh, if you'd like a reading with me do come and join the patreon family and book your reading thank you Sagittarius Capricorn rising sun or moon people well, the energy of Mars in Virgo for the next month until the 28th of August is going to be affecting your ninth house. And there's a sort of a yin-yang energy going on with Mars in Virgo. There's good and bad. Let's talk about what that looks like. Well, Mars in Virgo is going to put an emphasis on international and foreign um, trade or relationships that sort of thing and you might be super busy if you've got a business that deals internationally or maybe you've you've got um, 
I don't know, a book or something that, that's marketed to an international audience, let's say, this is the house of publishing after all, Capricorn, you might be super, super busy promoting that or practically, you know, working on that, whatever it happens to be that you're dealing with internationally, um, you just flat out like a lizard drinking, as we say in Australia, <laughs> uh, and really bringing um, energy into ninth house things in that way, foreign affairs, foreign travel, you might be um, feeling really g'd up to go and do a trip of some sort um, now Mars in your chart is the fourth house so definitely rules the fourth house so definitely you might be even considering putting some energy into moving or taking a trip overseas living out of a suitcase might be on the cards for you at some stage Capricorn in the next few weeks uh, also this is uh, the energy that has to do with university level learning higher learning and you've got enthusiasm now for your studies enthusiasm and drive to maybe study something of, of higher value astrology fits into this category so if you would like to come study with me at the royal stars academy i would love to see you there but you have the enthusiasm now you have the drive and you actually have the strategies to put into place to figure out how to get through the university process or get through the higher learning process um, this is a, stra a strategic planet in a, a sign that has to do with your future vision. So you're actually looking at if I do this university course, where's that going to take me? And making a strategy around that. If I come and study astrology with Ksenia, where's that going to take me in the future? Will I be able to come and become an astrologer? How will I make that work? And then I'll start charging for clients. And this is and you start strategizing. This is what I want to achieve. This is how I'm going to achieve it. And go through that learning process. Um, ninth house you know sort of high level learning um, to get there so strategizing the learning process is what we're looking at here Mars might fire up your belief systems Mars can be quite um, how shall I word it um, uh, belligerent energy in its shadow side and this is the realm of beliefs and uh, ethics and um, you know what we what we uh, align ourselves with in terms of morals and truth, and so you might be get, you might find that you you get into arguments about your belief systems at some stage over the next month or so, um, or about what is truth for you. You might be you know sort of going head to head with somebody um, about some concept or some philosophy. So that's okay. Uh, just remember to be respectful. But sometimes when we get into sort of um, disagreements with others, it can actually solidify what we really do believe and what we really put our um, our trust in. So um, don't don't shy away from those sorts of things, but be respectful, of course. Understanding um, our or expanding our reality through adventure comes from the ninth house. That's why it's connected to travel because we broaden our horizons and, and we, when we travel and we understand the world in a more expanded way when we travel. That's why travel and the expansion of our soul are both connected to the ninth house. So Mars here gives us um, a hunger for it and a desire for adventure, but not only to travel as I've spoken about, um, but also to just expand the soul generally. So you might be desirous of expanding your soul through reading some sort of mind expanding books or you know on a, on a topic or a concept that you've never explored before. You might dive into some sort of old wisdom, you know, ancient stoic, stoic philosophy or something. You might be exploring through reading or jumping online or watching a, a documentary or something like that. Mars gives you enthusiasm for understanding um, different belief systems and expanding your soul. It feels like adventure to explore those things. Uh, now, these are some of the good things Mars is doing, but Mars can have you feeling a bit overwhelmed with too much on your plate regarding ninth house things. Maybe you're planning a trip overseas and you want to see this country, that country, that city, that you know tourist attraction, blah, 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 and you're trying to fit it all in and jam it all in and you're just like, oh my God, it's too overwhelming. It's too much. Um, so Mars can leave you feeling overwhelmed with the themes of the ninth house, which is travel. You might be overwhelmed with your university choices or the, the options available to you to study something and learn something new. You might be um, looking to expand your understanding, as I said, through some sort of adventurous experience or expansive um, learning opportunity. 
Um, and it can leave you feeling, you know, it can leave you feeling overwhelmed. Mars is sometimes connected to shocks. Before Uranus was discovered, Mars was the planet connected to shocks. And so what we can find is that you get a new vision of the world. You see a new truth while Mars moves through the ninth house and it leaves you feeling overwhelmed. You know, I've had that come up a number of times for me over the past couple of years, actually, where what I thought was truth, where what I thought was real, turned out to be something very different and it left me reeling feeling overwhelmed it left me in a state of shock so that can actually happen perhaps for some of you uh, over the next couple of weeks also um, so you, you might be feeling a high level of nervous energy as well um, once again uh, explore spiritual books or higher learning or something like that to help um, ease any nervous tension that you might be experiencing while Mars moves through this this realm there could also be because mars is arguments there might be some sort of um feistiness when it comes to religion you know you might be going head to head with someone about religion or um or even court um hearings and that sort of thing there might be sort of an aggressive court hearing um uh, mars is a problem solver so for those of you who are dealing with court cases right now um yes it could get feisty but there's likely to be resolution that comes out of a, a court case with Mars moving through this um, this realm of the chart for you guys. So to conclude Capricorn, I just want to let you know that if you've been somebody who's wanted a reading with me, I haven't done any readings for about a year while I've worked on the Royal Stars Academy, but I am now offering readings for my Patreon family, gold, silver and bronze star levels. Um, so if you would like to get a reading with me, come join the Patreon family and step into that opportunity. Thank you Capricorn. Aquarius rising, Aquarius sun, Aquarius moon people. All right, so the energy of Mars moving into uh, Virgo, your eighth house, is happening between the 10th of July and the 28th of August. And this is where you might get a bit of a yin yang experience over the next month. This is the house of the mystical and the magical. Um, and Mars and Virgo are very much connected and, and sort of focusing, narrowing down on the practicalities of life. So it's, it's quite a polaric kind of energy, isn't it? But you might feel inspired or energized to go and speak to someone who deals with sort of magical work, maybe a shaman or somebody who deals with energy healing or chakras in some way. You might get uh, enthused Mars is enthusiasm to go and um, seek out somebody who does that sort of work maybe in doing so you can help heal and fix and resolve something in your life that's not working as well Mars is sudden shocks and this is a house of shocks um, I mean Mars was the planet of shocks before we discovered Uranus which is even more shocking so um, in the house of sudden reversals and turns around so there's likely to be Mars is a quick planet I think for many of you there's likely to be some sort of fast changes maybe a shocking event or um, getting out of a rut in some area of life that may happen for you over the next month so that could look like anything really it could be that you know maybe you've been in a bit of a funk psychologically and feeling a bit down a bit low um, and along comes Mars here and energizes your mood in some way um, and that that sort of happens quickly it happens fast and suddenly you're feeling really good again so it could look like that getting you out of a rut or for some people Mars is to, to cut um, uh, things and so there, there could be a, a cutting off of a you know um, maybe an intimate relationship or uh, some sort of being cut out of a will and that could be a something of a shock um, or a dramatic reversal Mars does that sort of thing. Now that's not going to happen for everybody and of course things have to pertain to what's going on in your natal chart and other big things that are playing out for you in the coming weeks in your natal chart. But for some people there might be a cutting out of some intimate relationship. It doesn't have to be like a, a spouse um, but it could be um, you know, a, a business partnership that comes to an end or a, a contractual agreement that ends in some way. Um, there's a cutting Mars. Mars here also uh, can see you, yeah, this is the house of what we receive from other people. So if you've had a problem with what you are due, what you are owed from other people in some way, uh, then Mars here can help you strategize how to resolve that and give you the energy to and the enthusiasm and the problem solving skills to uh, address something that you are 
deserving of but that you haven't received from others. So that could be, you know, maybe a tax return with the government and you, you get the energy to go and speak to the government or write a letter to the government or something like that and get your taxes in order and make sure that you get that payment that you are owed from the government, for example. So it could be taxes, it could be a will, it could be um, some contract that needs to be paid out. Um, there's energy here, Mars, and enthusiasm for getting things resolved and sorting out those problems with um, money that other people owe you. Um, this is, yeah, this is also a house of sex and Mars is a planet of desire. So some of you might be feeling very turned on in that realm, very amorous. And so why not enjoy that? That sounds <laughs> like a good side of Mars to, to make the most of if you've got a partner to enjoy with. Um, and Mars also in your chart rules the third house Aries. So it would be good to communicate about sex with a partner while Mars moves through here. Maybe you've always wanted to try something new and experiment. Mars can give you the, um, the initiative to sort that, you know, to address that with a partner and uh, approach doing something uh, on the experimental side with a partner perhaps in the eighth house. There's also a lot of passion wherever Mars goes as well. So you might be feeling very alive in that realm or passionate in that realm. So make the most of that. Um, finally, this is a very sensitive house placement and Mars in Virgo is a very sensitive sign. So you might be feeling a little bit of overwhelm. Um, you might be feeling, you know, um, <sighs> Virgo is to worry. And you might be feeling with Mars moving through here, a bit of worry about the future, um, about maybe a business that you're worrying about. Mars ruling the third house of small business. Um, you might be feeling a little bit of uh, angst, perhaps, uh, regarding finances in some way. Like I said, I was describing the, the finances that you are owed from other people. Um, so there might be some angst around that um, because there's a sensitization when Mars is in Virgo and Virgo is a sign of worry. So have some strategies up your sleeve to deal with those feelings. Um, you might like to... Um, uh, Virgo is ruled by Mercury which is to move it's a restless energy so you might like to take a walk or a bike ride uh, in order to sort of process things um, it's also um, healthy to perhaps speak to a counsellor uh, also as well and it could be a financial counsellor could be some other kind of a counsellor pertaining to whatever it is you're worrying about uh, but that's a good thing to do to help alleviate the sort of the nervous energy and the over worrying that can sometimes happen with Virgo and I want to mention, Aquarius, that I will be doing readings for my Patreon family uh, after a one-year sabbatical to do the Royal Stars Academy. Um, and that's happening next week. I'm offering readings to my Patreon family. So if you would like to book in, you need to be a Patreon member at bronze, silver or gold star level. But I just want to make sure people are aware so nobody who wants a reading misses out. Okay, thank you, Aquarius. Pisces rising, Pisces sun, Pisces moon people. Well, Pisces Mars in the chart is your indicator of wealth. Why is that? Or indicator of um, money. Why? Because Mars happens to rule your second house of money and your ninth house of blessings. So Mars is a financial indicator for Pisces people. And here it is moving into the house of your partners. So for your, for you Pisces, some of your partners, Pisces moon, Pisces sun, Pisces rising people, your partners might suddenly find that money is now increasing for them. They might have more income coming their way. They might be very busy and productive around generating money in their life in some way. So your partner gets busy with the practicalities of life connected to money for Pisces people. Now Virgo is a sign of work. It could be that they're, they're getting more work or they're getting more um, offers for collaboration. Seventh house, that can be happening as well. There's also a chance Pisces to help heal and fix whatever's not working with seventh house things. So um, you might be energized and have lots of enthusiasm to sort out a problem in a relationship or a business partnership. This is also a business house, Pisces. So if you're in a business situation and something hasn't been gelling, something hasn't been working right, maybe an advertising campaign hasn't been going the way you wanted it to or whatever, this Mars energy gives you what you need to problem solve that and fix it and address it 
You know, Mars is a doer energy. We're not afraid to confront things that are out of alignment, especially in Virgo where we like to perfect things. So I'd also encourage you Pisces to get your goals in order regarding connections and partnerships. What do you want to achieve with your relationships? Where do you see your relationships heading? Business partnerships, client relationships, marriages. What do you see your partnership looking like in 10 years time, 20 years time? Do you, are you heading in the same direction with your partner, whatever type of partnership it is? This energy of Mars here um, gets you in a strategic mood, strategic zone, and you start to sort out, okay, well, this is where we want to be. This is what we want our relationship to look like. This is what we want our business to look like. What have we got to do to get there? What steps do we need to take to be in that position as a couple, as a business partnership, as a um, as a a client you know provider kind of situation so um, in that sense Mars can offer a lot of valuable um, support but the one thing I just want to say is that some of you may be feeling Pisces a bit of an oversupply of nervous energy um, because Mars and and Virgo they're they're not the best of mates um, and yeah they don't get along overly well Uh, so there can be a nervous energy here um, usually be connected to some relationship or maybe you're in a partnership with somebody and it doesn't feel like it's quite gelling the way it should that can cause you to address the problems of course so there's a maybe there's a method in the madness um, there but um, but yes there could be some arguments causing nervous energy Mars is a planet of arguments so you might be arguing with your partners arguing with your spouse and it creates a bit of tension so when you know this Pisces, you're a gentle soul. You, when you know that you know any fractious interactions with other people are the response uh, uh, um, because of Mars in the house of the other, then you can sort of rest at peace, knowing oh, don't don't take it personally. Let this energy pass over. After the 28th of August, it'll be all over, and maybe it's causing me to wake up and address a few things that are out of balance, things that I need to sort out. I'll just conclude by saying. Pisces, this is a time for um, reviewing contracts and negotiations and commitments and promises um, as well and any alliances that you've got and just making sure that they come up to scratch. So you, you can get aggressive now about dealing with any contractual situations. Um, it's also a really good time to be doing, um, you've got the energy to put into those pa- the paperwork, like creating a contract or creating an agreement, um, submitting documents and that kind of stuff. It's a really good time when you've got energy and enthusiasm to give to that kind of work as well. Now, Pisces, I just want to mention that I will be doing readings for my Patreon family. I haven't done readings for a year um, because I've been working on the Royal Stars Academy, but I will be offering them to my Patreon family only so if you want a reading with me, you'll need to join the Patreon family at bronze, silver or gold star level so that you can jump in and order a reading. I'm making that available only to my patrons from next week. Thank you, Pisces. Aries rising, sun or moon people. Well, the energy of Mars moving through Virgo is affecting your sixth house. And this is like double whammy of Mars in the sixth house sorry, of um, Virgo, sixth house energy, emphasized by um, Mars, because Virgo has very uh, similar connotations to the sixth house. So you're going to be like ultra productive, ultra energized to, um, to, to do work, to, to, you know, work on your daily routine, to get healthy, to get fit, to sort out any problems with your eating, your diet, your exercise routine. You're going to have what it takes to, you know, be enthusiastic about going and finding the right practitioners to help you heal something, an illness or something that's not working in your life, going and finding, a, you know, an accountant who can help you sort out, um, you know, accountancy problems or a bookkeeper or something like that. You have the enthusiasm and the drive now to sort out your problems, to resolve them, to get your goals in order, to heal what isn't working in your life and fix what isn't working. So this is, this is wonderful. In a house of problems, Mars does extremely well in the sixth house. He is the go-getter. He's a doer. He makes things happen. Takes us out of our victim mentality and says, let's just get on with the show. So Aries, this is a great position. And not only that, it's your first house lord as well. So you might find that you have a lot of problems 
crop up for you between now and the 28th of August but you've got what it takes you've got the enthusiasm and the drive and the problem solving skills for the next few weeks to sort out any issues that might come up any issues where, where there's no you know we're difficulty getting along with other people where there's a lack of fairness and equality where there's some sort of imbalance where um, maybe there's a hard work that needs doing where you are having struggles you know health wise um, finance wise education wise you know uh, any area of life that's a daily part of living where you're having problems Mars is going to help you problem solve and sort these things out this is also a house of cleaning I feel for many of you Aries people you're going to be inspired early at least early in Australia to get spring cleaning sort out those cupboards um, you know vacuum in those dark dingy corners and um, really transform your home space because cleaning is a sixth house energy and a Virgo energy and Mars gives enthusiasm Mars gives get up and go and drive to make things happen so that's a really good thing I would just say for the next month or so my beautiful Aries do be careful of what you eat especially hot foods spicy foods that kind of thing um, just be careful how that plays out with your digestive system because Mars Mars here um, can give an overabundance of fire energy in the house of our diet and that can sort of play up with our digestive system so it can be a really good idea to practice eating cooling foods instead while Mars is here to sort of you know cool the body drink plenty of water but also uh, forgiveness is not a Mars thing but Mars is anger and resentment and aggression here in the house of enemies and of course that can wreak havoc with our systems as well including the digestive system when we're all in anxiety and nervous energy over um, maybe some clash or some argument and so forth um, do remember forgiveness is a terrific help and it's actually really good help for digestive issues it's been you know researched that being able to forgive not not to let people get away with shitty behavior but to to lighten our own burden of worry and care over you know somebody else and what they did to us and resentment and bitterness when we can let go of those things and release those things to the universe or to the powers that be it really helps heal our imbalances internally other things do of course as well and you don't you know wouldn't do that just on your own if you've got a digestive imbalance or something but forgiveness is soothing um, and it's certainly a tool you can use so keep that in mind when you've got a little you know ball of fire like Mars aggression and passion and so forth moving moving through this sort of problematic house the sixth house um, that you know if you can forgive and if you can keep your cool eat those cooling foods to soothe your, your body physically um, you will find that this is a um, more beneficial transit than a negative one so I just wanted to mention that for my Aries friends now um, I just want to also let you know that I am returning to doing readings after a year off I've been doing the Royal Stars Academy for a year it's still not quite finished but um, I need to return to doing readings again and I'm only offering them to my Patreon family so if you're a Patreon family member and you would like a reading with me um, then you can book one in um, but if you're not a Patreon member come and join the Patreon family and then you'll be eligible to book in and get a reading with me if you want one thank you Aries all right Taurus rising Taurus Sun Taurus moon people well the energy of Mars moving through your fifth house in Virgo um, is obviously being felt in your fifth house <laughs> so I got my words all mucked up there but um, this is sort of a yin yang energy where there's going to be some benefit and there might also be a bit of difficulty as well so let's explore this what this is is um, describing is the 12th house Lord in the fifth so there might be a bit of a disillusion of something fifth house in your life maybe um, you know maybe a creative project you know you sort of letting it go maybe it didn't fly the way you wanted it to or maybe you finished with it now and you're sort of releasing that to the universe um, 12th house is to dissolve 12th house is endings so there could be an ending with a creative project fifth house there could be an ending with some kind of a dynamic with your children maybe it could be a negative dynamic like maybe you've been struggling with a child's you know 
I don't know, addiction to gaming or something like that. And lo and behold, Mars, 12th house Lord, moves through the 5th house and causes that child to say, you know what, I've had enough with gaming and I think I want to go and do some drawing or I'm going to join a sports team or something. So there's an ending of some dynamic with the child that might be happening as a result of Mars, 12th house Lord, moving through the 5th. There could be an ending of some dynamic with a, a lover or a romance as well. For some people, it might look like the romance is coming to an end. For other people, it might be that the dy a certain dynamic in the romance is ending. Maybe you decide that you don't want to live apart anymore and you're going to move in together or something. So something to do with romance or a dating situation changes because um, or it comes to a conclusion and wherever there are endings, there are always new beginnings, remember, um, that have to do with the fifth house now Mars here um, is going to cause you to get super productive. So while one, um, one of these areas of life might be drawing to a close, there's going to be something new that opens up in, uh, to take its place. Super productive, busy with creative endeavors, busy with um, ch fulfilling your, your heart, chasing joy and, and exhilaration and happiness, which is a fifth house thing, knowing what makes you happy. You might get an aha sort of eureka moment that oh my goodness that is satisfying that pleases me that makes me feel good um the fire of god is seen through the fifth house and this is a fire planet in a fiery house in that regard so some of you might be uh, yeah very busy with with your talents very busy with um, connecting to your creative self um, you might find that you're very busy with dating as well. There might, you might be being asked out on dates left, right and centre. Or your children are making life very busy. But you've got the energy. You've got the drive with Mars here to really give to, the, to those um, areas of your life well. And get even get playful or have a bit of fun with your lovers, with your children. Um, you might be playing more sports with your children. Um, Mars is a sporting energy. It's, uh, you might be having a date that's like a hit of tennis or something with a partner um, because Mars is to do with the muscles and it's to do with being sporty and active and energized. So if you are somebody who's been scratching your head for what kind of dates you can go on, try and pick something where there's some sort of movement or energy involved or something fast like you know going to the... I don't know, NASCAR or something like that. You could go take your kids there or to go on a date or something like that to NASCAR. Mars rules fast things. Um, so that's, yeah, there's some ideas there for how Mars might be expressing here. Um, I would also encourage you to get your goals in order with what you want to achieve regarding a relationship, regarding a creative process or a creative project you're working on or the goals that you have for how you're going to raise your children. Maybe it's time to sit down with your other half and talk about how you're going to parent um, and um, how you know what what your um, aspirations are for you, your children maybe do I want to send them to this kindergarten or that kindergarten or are we going to save up and send them to this high school or that high school there is um, a, an energy of Mars that wants to strategize and plan regarding children and even lovers and dating and creative projects also so uh, in that sense Mars is going to give you uh, a special time to strategize um, towards your goals in that, that area of life. So very, very busy energy. Um, you might find uh, just as a shadow side to this that your children are very whiny and complainy um, for the next month or so. And that's just the energy of Mars moving through Virgo, sort of stirring up that energy in the house of children. So if that's the case, don't be too hard on them. Maybe they need more sleep or maybe they need to have more fun in their life or something. But usually <laughs> with this energy, it's a response to um, the transiting planet. It's just, it will pass. It's not going to be that way forever. Let them just push that energy through <laughs> and, uh, and try not to take it too personally if you're looking after children who are a bit whingy and a bit whiny in that regard. Now, uh, Taurus, I want to let you know that I am returning to doing readings for people um, after a year off doing my Royal Stars Academy, but I, I, I'm only offering readings to my Patreon family. And if you would like a reading with me, then come and join the Patreon family and you might be able to book in a reading that way with me if that's something you would like. Thank you, Taurus. All right, Gemini rising, Gemini sun, Gemini moon. Well, we've got Mars moving through Virgo, your fourth house, Gemini, over the next month until August the 28th. 
So what does this mean? Well, Mars happens to be the 11th house Lord moving through the 4th house. This is rewards and gains going into the home arena. So you might be um, establishing or initiating some sort of entrepreneurial activity from home that's going to really pay off. You Maybe you're starting, I don't know, a furniture business out of your garage and you're buying old furniture and restoring it and selling it, for example. And that's, that might be, you know, your little side hustle in your garage at home, bringing you rewards and gains, using tools. Mars is to use tools to renovate old furniture or build something. Maybe you, you start a, a, a cooking channel, you know, a YouTube channel where you're cooking. And <laughs> I'm just reminded of a, new, a cooking channel that I discovered this last week that I absolutely love. Um, and that's what I reckon. If you haven't checked it out, do check it out. I'll throw in a free promo for him. <laughs> it is hilarious. But Mars rules knives. Mars rules um, anything hot like stoves and, um, and hot spicy foods and things. So um, here in uh, the Virgo, which is to do with cooking in the fourth house of home, you might start, 11th house, the internet, a YouTube channel doing some sort of cooking and chopping up stir fries and all that sort of stuff. Um, so there could be something that you're very busy with in that regard. Maybe you're busy entertaining in your home space, entertaining, entertaining friends, or maybe you've got a political group coming around for a meeting in your home um, with Mars moving through the fourth house and being the ruler of the 11th house. Super busy, super productive to do with uh, connections and social things, the internet, but from your home base, from your home domestic environment. Mars rules real estate agents. Some of you might be having a real estate agent come through your house to appraise it and give you a quote or something like that. Also, this is an energy um, of feeling inspired to help heal and fix what's not working in your home space. So quite practically, you might be fixing that old leaky gutter or that um, hot water service that keeps breaking down or you might be you know laying new carpets or something like doing something practical that's going to fix a problem in your home make things better in your home so Mars energy to get practical to get on the tools in your uh, on your property on your land in your home environment one thing I would say you, you need to be very careful of Gemini is that Mars is uh, fighting and anger in its shadow side so this is the house of our parents generally speaking it's the parental axis so you might be having sort of a disagreement or a bit of argy-bargy with a parent perhaps or with a with a family member perhaps or maybe about parenting maybe you're going head to head with your partner or your mother-in-law or something about how you're parenting and how you're raising your children um, Mars can create angst um, regarding fourth house things or maybe you have a disagreement with your partner about what color you're going to paint the bathroom um, that's kind of thing Mars is anger and um, angst and aggression regarding domestic family issues okay so for one for armed uh, on that one also I will just mention that whenever Mars and it does every two years so it's not a rare occurrence but whenever Mars travels through the fourth house we need to be careful Gemini of hot things fireplaces stoves knife sharp things too knives and um you know anything with a sharp edge like maybe you've got a sword on display or a I don't know, gun on display or something like that um mars rules all those things and so just be careful in the shadow side uh that make sure these things are all functioning well like there's no blockages in your chimney so it's not going to set something on fire uh, make sure that you don't leave your drying clothes too close to the heater. Uh, make sure you turn the stove off and the iron off when you leave the house. All those sorts of things. Be doubly vigilant when Mars is moving through the fourth house. Um, anything hot, anything sharp, um, anything explosive. Um, you just need to make sure is um, all a-okay for you. Thank you, Gemini. Now, I just want to let you know that I am returning to doing readings for people. Um, but I'm only offering them to my Patreon family. I, I've been having a year off to do my Royal Stars Academy, but I do need to return to doing readings. Got to keep your finger in or your foot in um, to be able to, you know, keep those skills up. And so I'm only offering readings to my Patreon family. If you would like a reading, Gemini, you need to be a Patreon at bronze, silver or gold star level, and then you can book in a reading with me if you would like to. Thank you, Gemini. Now, Cancer, Cancer rising, sun or moon people. Well, the energy of Mars 
is moving through Virgo for uh, the next month until the 28th of August and it's affecting your third house and this is where you are going to feel super duper productive now for our cancer friends Aries rules the 10th house and Mars is the the Lord of Aries the 10th house Lord so there's a real connection between career and a small business perhaps for some cancer people if you are someone who has a small business or runs a side hustle of some description you are going to be particularly busy and very very um, yeah flat out uh, productive with uh, with whatever small business or little career endeavor that you've got running um, you're gonna be really really busy and you'll be busy doing not only the high level you know oh I'm writing this novel or I'm um, you know producing this jam to sell at the local market or whatever it happens to be not with the the big productive elements but you're also going to be super busy with the administrative elements as well and the uh, promotional elements and the accounting and taxation elements of what you're doing you're going to be busy with everything busy 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 regarding um, a small business or some sort of career endeavor so get ready to run for the next month or so and that might be because you've got more orders it might be because you've got more clients um, and there's a reason that you're busier so it could be all thumbs up in that regard um, also uh, you might be really getting your goals in order sorting things out and strategizing okay I want to achieve this in my small business I want to achieve this with I mean this is the third house it has to do with writing webinars um, speaking engagements social media representation so you might be really really busy um, you know with those things but also setting some goals you know what I want to be I want to have say 5,000 followers on my Instagram page by XYZ what do I need to do to achieve that well I might need to do some advertising campaigns or I might need to do something to attract people to my Instagram blah, 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 all that stuff you're strategizing how you're going to make social media work for you, your speaking engagements, writing, goals, um, webinar ideas, you're going to be strategizing as well as putting energy into creating and initiating these things as well. So busy, busy, busy Cancer friends. This is the house of being busy. Mars is a very fast, energized, enthusiastic planet as well. Um, so yep, yeah, get ready. It's a house of self-made wealth and running uh, from running your own business. So um, there could be, uh, yeah, because Mars in the traditional astrology rules your fifth house Scorpio as well. There could be certainly um, some luck coming your way with regards to how you're making your own money through running your own business or using your skills and talents and putting them out there to the world or perhaps getting involved in some sort of communication endeavors like social media etc so there could be some lucky breaks that come your way maybe you get asked to go on a podcast or you interview somebody on your channel maybe you get um, you know suddenly a, a, an influx or a rise in followers in some way cancer um, that really does your business a lot of favors um, you know maybe you get um, yeah you you you, uh, you really take a step up because of the rulership of Mars in the third house uh, of all these things that I'm talking about this is buying selling it is communicating um, it, it's wonderful so I think this is a really great energy for our cancer friends the only thing I would be careful of is that this is a very uh, like it's a mental house it's a so it's um an earth uh, sorry an air house and Mars here can cause us an o have an oversupply of nervous energy. We're so busy, 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 we don't switch off and our mind doesn't go to sleep when, when we get into bed at night. It's just running through all the things we want to do tomorrow. Very high strung energy mentally. So be very conscious of that. You might need some strategies to unwind and calm down, especially in the evenings before you go to bed, that kind of thing. Um, too much mental energy, too much zip 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 between ideas and what you've got to do and making lists and you know showing up on this podcast and you know organizing this website and blah 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 and you get overwhelmed so have some strategies and perhaps maybe pick one big project that you really want to direct your enthusiasm and attention into the most important thing rather than have, having a million things on the go focus on one important thing that you really want to get done and that way Mars enthusiasm and drive will 
accomplish so much more by being more narrow in focus rather than spread out all over the place, um, giving you a sense of overwhelm. So that's, that's what I'm feeling for our Cancer friends for the next month. And I want to, before I go, Cancer, just let you know that if you've always wanted a reading with me, I am offering readings for the first time in a year. I've been busy writing the Royal Stars Academy um, for those who are studying astrology with me. Um, but I am returning to doing readings, but only for my Patreon family because I just want to keep my finger in and I don't want to overwhelm myself, especially with what's going on with Mars and Virgo. So if you would like a reading with me, you'll need to join the Patreon family. Bronze, silver or gold star level patrons are welcome to come have a reading or book in to have a reading with me. Um, just letting you all know. Thank you, Cancer. And finally, lovely Leos who waited till last. Thank you, my gorgeous Leo friends. Nearly time for Leo season and I do love Leo season every year. I often notice a shift of energy because I'm a Leo sun. Big shift of energy occurs in my life usually in Leo season, so I always look forward to that. But for our Leo sun rising or moon people, the energy of Mars moving out of Leo and into Virgo is happening on the 10th of July and will last until the 28th of August. This is the realm of life that Leo people are going to get super energized and super productive about. Virgo, you're going to be busy with um, second house things which is, is money making money um, being self-reliant being self-sufficient doing what you need to do to support your body's journey through life my Leo friends you might be um, I'm just looking at what Mars rules you might be like putting your enthusiasm and you know getting the job done regarding making money and and there is a real energy with Mars here to help heal and fix what's not working if you've got if you've like I'll use myself as a scenario if you've got a like a something you're selling online for example and it's just not cutting the mustard it's causing you, you know maybe you undervalued it or maybe you uh, and, and prices have gone up and you're not getting the return that you need for what you're putting into that product or whatever it happens to be then there this is the time for healing that fixing that putting the right price on it charging what you're worth um, this is the time to address money issues and sort them out also Mars is is to be a goal setter and, a, and strategic so this is the time to get your financial goals in order what do you you know what do you deserve when you're putting your efforts and talents out there in the world what do you deserve to be remunerated with what do you need to live what can you offer the world to cover your living costs it's about strategizing and setting goals where do you want to be financially in five years ten years fifty years time whatever it is Mars is calling you to set some goals now and put your energy of, of strategizing into figuring out where you want to go where you want to be so that's that's a, a positive that you can use Mars for now in a Leo rising chart Mars rules the ninth house so uh, this is also a house of spending for some Leos they might be spending money on international travel or promoting themselves in some way to an international audience you might be it's actually a good time Leo to spend some money on perhaps some sort of higher learning or gaining new knowledge and um, particularly of a, a high level variety like a university course or studying an astrology course or doing some sort of um, a certificate in um, like philosophy or psychology or something like that um, high level high, high wisdom areas not just skills of the hands not that they're any lesser but skills of the hands like hairdressing or carpentry or um, sculpting or something I've seen through the third house but skills of the higher mind like you know medicine law astrology science etc <clears throat> they come from the ninth house so you might be spending money on doing some sort of course of the higher mind um, and that's a that's a good way to use this energy of Mars in the second house now I just want to point out Leo that for some of you you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed because Virgo is to worry and Mars kind of energizes the 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 energy of Virgo um, when he's there and you might be feeling overwhelmed by your financial situation or you might find that you're constantly you know criticizing yourself about how you've gotten the financial position that you're in that doesn't do anyone any favors you know better to problem solve and strategize how you're gonna fix things than to sort of sit there going poor me I'm a victim um, but there's also a, a sense of an, um, 
like a, a sensitivity around money. So for some of us Leos, we might be feeling like we've got to tighten the purse strings a bit because we're sensitive to how our money's being spent or where our money's been going and we're going to sort of, you know, pull in the reins, so to speak, um, because we're feeling overwhelmed. I've got to be careful of that. That's one of my big f failing points in my character is that I worry too much about that kind of thing. So... Um, and there's reasons in my astrology for that I will add as well but uh, just for Leo people remember you might be feeling overwhelmed you might be feeling a little bit um, tense and anxious about financial situations it doesn't mean that you are going to be in a difficult financial situation but the worry is there so be kind to you you know be kind to you as best you can maybe plan and strategize first and then deal with the worry later <laughs> when you've got a, when you've got things structured and organized and when you can see things you know clearly because you've you've set some goals in place and some strategies for dealing with it then the worry and anxiety uh, perhaps doesn't get so much of a foothold um, I would suggest so that's um, that's really where a lot of the energy for uh, Mars is going and also Mars rules the fourth house Scorpio for Leo people and so here in the second house it can can look like spending money on a home or a domestic property perhaps it can also look like um, maybe you're, you're investing in some land or some property or some some sort of real estate in some way uh, you might be um, you might be yeah getting a valuation on a property because this is the house of what we value and to get valuation to understand what uh, what resources you've got if you've got a home you might be getting a valuation or something like that done um, with the fourth house lord in the second house of what we value um, you might be looking more at real estate and sort of adding up and strategizing can I afford this would this be a better home um, would this suit my needs better is this a better resource for me in life you might be looking at homes also vehicles as well um, can also come under that category too so you might be weighing up and strategizing uh, around homes and vehicles um, in some way in order to perhaps Virgo energy fix what's not actually working in your life uh, in terms of the resources that you have that support your body's journey so Leo I want to just mention that um, I am returning to doing readings for people after a one-year sabbatical while I wrote the Royal Stars Academy um, and I'm returning to doing readings for people but only for my Patreon family I don't want to overwhelm myself <laughs> too much if you would like a reading with me then you'll need to join the Royal Stars Academy they're the only ones I'm offering readings to at the moment and uh, that's at bronze silver or gold star level if you would like to get a reading done with me so thank you one and all for joining me for this week's Astro Weather Report. I'll be back next week with more good Astro news. In fact, you don't want to miss next week's report because it's going to be, well, almost the most impactful week of the year um, from next week, next Saturday's Astro Weather Report on. So don't miss that. I'll be coming at you with a very special Astro Weather Report. I'll catch you then.